Hakone is a hot spring region that is a noted tourist location partly for international tourists, but also for Japanese people looking for a getaway from the bustling megacities. For example, we're staying in Tokyo roughly here, and Hakone is roughly here, and you can get from one to the other in less than an hour on the Shinkansen bullet train. Let's look at their website to get an idea of the fun in the sun activities we could enjoy there. There's a beautiful lake with views of Mount Fuji, and on that lake is a boat that looks like a pirate ship. Fun! And there's a cool ropeway over some very active hot spring areas, and at the top of that ropeway is a peak that overlooks the mountain and valley below. Wowee! I bet we'll have a great time. But let us start at the start. And that is the Shinkansen bullet train from Shinagawa Station in Tokyo into a city called Odawara. It does this in about 25 minutes, which gives it an average speed around 200 kilometers per hour, but given that there's a stop in the middle, it's actually faster than that. I spoke with someone about whether or not it would feel fast to ride the Shinkansen, and the answer is yes. It might not come across in the video, but it feels fast. Everyone who's taken the train talks about these ekiben, which are these kind of like uh, prepackaged lunchbox that you can buy on the train platform. And uh, honestly, we weren't that impressed with them. Uh, the food, you can get better food for cheaper at the convenience store. But, uh, you know, they're cute and kind of a neat idea. Odawara seemed like a nice, small town, but honestly, we didn't spend any time there. We just got right on the bus to Hakone. All right, let's talk transit. As you can see here, Hakone's transit system is set up to be kind of like a loop. So the plan was to leave Odawara on a bus down here to the boat terminal. From there, we take the pirate ship cruise up here to Togendai, the ropeway. It goes through Owakadani to Sonzan. A cable car takes us down the mountain to Gora. From here, a bus would take us to our accommodations for the night. The next morning, we'd return to Gora and take a steep mountain train back to Odawara. Closing the loop. The perfect plan. So anyway, the first step is the bus from Odawara down to the boat terminal. Looking pretty good, nice and foresty. Windy mountain road. Hmm, that seems kind of windy. And when we get down to the port, the boat is cancelled due to high wind. Let's pull up the map again. Turns out the ropeway also doesn't run in high wind, which means the map doesn't really look like this anymore, it looks more like this. And that's not really much of a loop, is it? Well, that's okay, because there was a shrine that we were planning on going to here, and there's a path all the way along the coastline, so maybe we just hike all that and we'd end up at Togendai anyway. To the shrine! Oh wait, there's a cute duck in the stormy waves. He does seem pretty cute. He's going for that garbage. He's, He's like, like that white bag. Sharon? Is that you, Sharon? <laughs> okay, now to the shrine. This shrine, like the other Shinto shrines, begins with washing your hands. From there, you go under this Tori gate, or through this Tori gate, and then up the stairs here and past these huge trees uh, up to the actual shrine, which is up at the top of the hill. We've been to a bunch of these shrines by now, and they're all very similar, uh, but they're all still lovely. And in fact, I think what we've decided is that we actually prefer them in the kind of rainy, overcast days. They seem a little more magical. One of the things this shrine is known for, it has a Tori gate down at the water out overlooking the lake. It's a very popular photo spot and what? Is that the line for photos? Oh, screw that. We've got walking to do. There were two problems with this hike. The first is that sometimes it looks like this, which is lovely, and other times it looks a little bit more like this. And these bits along the road were most of the walk actually. And the other problem was that this full hike along the coast was like two hours long. So it wasn't like bad per se, but it was longer than we intended it to be, and this transit system shuts down at like five, because it gets dark. But we eventually made it to Togendai, the ropeway, which was still cancelled by the way. The boat was now partially running, but only to one of the ports, and we didn't really have time at this point to go out and come back and still catch the bus up to our hotel for the night, so we just decided to do the boat tomorrow. Of course, the bus doesn't stop at the hotel, so we still had to walk up this hill, uh, which we were pretty familiar with by now. Okay, let's talk about the hotel. 
We were staying at a ryokan, which is the traditional Japanese inn. So it had the tatami mat floors and the futons and the low tables and the sliding shoji doors. They also typically serve a full course Japanese meal for dinner and breakfast. And they have a hot spring bath, one for ladies and one for gents, which you can't film in because everybody's naked. Our room was okay, but honestly, it was clear that this place was past its prime. It wasn't bad or dirty, but it clearly was dated and not getting better. Also, this place didn't do dinner anymore and our breakfast was canceled, so we had to venture out into the rain to get food. I didn't film this part because it was dark and rainy, but I wish I could have, so here's some stock footage of rain. On the map when we booked it, it looked like this place was in an area with a lot of restaurants, and so we figured we'd just walk around until we found something we liked. But what we learned was that A, a lot of these places are other Ryokans and aren't even open to the public, and B, you can't just walk around because everything is sequestered away up its own mountain road even though they're close on the map. And C, some of the places we did find only opened by request in advance and didn't take walk-ins. Oh, and it's pretty dark the whole time. So we did manage to find something, but we were pretty wet and tired by the end of it. It was sushi, it was good, we didn't film it, but it was an ordeal. Okay, day two, it was still raining on and off, but we needed breakfast because breakfast was canceled. There was a convenience store like a 10 minute walk away that uh, where we could get some rice balls to stuff our face with, but you can't eat in the store, so we had to kind of, we had to kind of stand with our back to the convenience store uh, alongside a vending machine and then use our umbrella as kind of a third wall to protect ourselves from the rain. I didn't film it because I was in it. Uh, I asked an AI to come up with a rendition. Hmm, not quite, but good try. It's what I've got. We wanted to take that stupid pirate ship, so we took a bus back down to Togendai. For some reason, they had a model of a thing from an anime, an Evangelion, I don't know why. This was also the first place I noticed that they have a hot drink machine, not just a cold drink machine. It makes sense, it just gets hot, and it keeps the drinks hot. I've now seen them in many places. Okay, hot bottled tea in hand, we headed down to the boat port. When we first got here, the ropeway was already cancelled, but the boats were still running. But as we sat here, they got more and more worried about it, and eventually they decided that our boat would be the last one out uh, the whole day. Um, so that was lucky, but also sucks for everyone else. This is an inland lake. There's nothing piratey that ever happened on this thing, but like, the boat was actually kind of neat even though it was gimmicky. Once the boat's underway, you can go out on the top deck, which even though it was windy and rainy, we obviously did. It was great and no regrets there. Aye, she was a good ship and she got us through many a stiff breeze. Okay, so now it was lunchtime and- oh, he's going a bit fast. Uh, anyway, now it was lunchtime and we wanted an udon noodle soup. The way this works is you look at the board there and then put the money into the vending machine and pick what you want from the vending machine. This will give you tickets with your number on it and then you go sit down and get yourself some tea or whatever. And then he'll call your number and then you go pick up the soup. Tasty soup and no human interaction. From there we set out to another of Hakone's attractions. You see, Hakone has an important part in history. Back in the old days, there was a walking path that connected Kyoto, which was once the capital of Japan, with Edo, now called Tokyo, which was the new capital of Japan. And along that route were way stations and security checkpoints to make sure the emperor knew who was entering and leaving the capital. And Hakone was the last such checkpoint before Tokyo, or the first one leaving if you're going that way. Along that route were various tea houses and inns, and one of them is still around today. It's been open for around 400 years and has served the same thing the whole time. Amazake, which is a sweet hot rice drink, kind of like a rice pudding that you drink, and a collection of mochi, which are chewy doughy balls of pounded rice flour that are coated in things like soy sauce or sesame seeds or sweet, uh, something. This place was neat, and I'm actually kind of sad we had to leave so soon. So now we're here, but even though the ropeway is closed, we still wanted to take the cable car up to the peak, which is a different thing. So we caught a bus from here, the Amazake Tea House, up to Gora. The cable car is kind of spooky quiet. And that's because what makes it a cable car is that there's a cable at the top of the mountain, and it just basically pulls this thing up the track. There's no motor in this thing. It's basically just a staircase with chairs that gets pulled up the side of a mountain. So now we're up at the top! Ropeway still closed, though there was a lady who was really upset about that, despite, I thought, ample warning. They had a cute, dinky little miniature Hakone. And an overlook, which, while it wasn't the view that we were going for, uh, was still really nice.
This balcony also has a public hot spring foot bath, which was really nice. From there, it was back to Odawara, then back to Tokyo, and then back home where we ate some soup and we slept. So that was our little overnight trip to Hakone. Uh, it didn't go exactly as planned, but we still had a pretty good time. Um, we didn't get uh, to ever see the ropeway, which is a little unfortunate, but we still experienced all the other things. What really hampered us more than the weather itself was just that when the loop was no longer a loop, it suddenly took longer to get everywhere so we could see less stuff in a day. Anyway, thanks for watching, and up next is Takayama and its Spring Festival. There are many cool things there, so, you know, keep your eye out.